Hello, I'm the Puppy Turtle, and here is yet another video. This is a response to actually every video, well, all but some of the videos, every video of an atheistic persuasion, with one exception, um, from a user who goes by This System Needs. T H I S S Y S T E M N E E D S. All one word. He uses the HAL 9000 as his logo. I, I, I bet he thinks he's really cool. The main thing he actually does is play bass, but he's also made a few atheistic videos. Or, sorry, bass. Okay, so let's just listen to some of the things he is saying. Okay. I, I, I hope you can hear it, what he says. Okay, first off, his ver the first video we'll be responding to is called Why They Disagree. There are Christians, many of them in fact, disagree with the theory of evolution. Now I have wondered long and hard as to why this is the case. Okay, system. We disagree with the theory of evolution because when you study science in depth, and when you try to compare the claims of evolutionary science and what it says has happened in the past with what we see happening now, you tend to see massive amounts of special pleading performed by evolutionist scientists. If I can't see it, no matter how good of a rationalization for the fact that I cannot see it, they have come up with. If I cannot look at it, observe it, test it, it's not science. I have stretched my mind about it, and I believe that I have found why. He does not give the answer I just gave. In regards to other theories, like the theory of gravity or any other theory, I can't think of Ted. Big surprise. There is evidence for it all around. Drop an apple, it'll fall, always and forever, at least on Earth. At least. For evolution, though, the evidence is only there if you look for it. When he says look for it, we'd desperately want to see it. It's not present just by its nature. You have to actually do study for it. This requires thinking and the will. In my experience, evolutionists seem to do the least thinking of any people. I'm not insulting their intelligence. I'm not insulting their ability to think. I'm saying that they need to think with greater frequency. This is something that, while I don't believe that all Christians lack this, I believe that the gross majority of them do. Notice he just said the gross majority of Christians. Here you can see the atheist hatred for God and for Christians. If he were only trying to push the theory of evolution forward and did not care about anybody else's religious beliefs as long as they matched up with what he thinks is science, then he would have said young earth creationist. But he said Christian. This is a little slip of the tongue that has shown us his character, who he is. He hates Christians. So, take that as you will. I will message the It's odd. He acts like such a cool... He's so polite with the tone of his voice, but he uses his words to be so passive-aggressive. He basically said, well, the people who disagree with evolution, it's because they lack the desire to go out and learn something. They lack the initiative. He's basically saying that, oh, if you don't believe in evolution, you're ignorant. You don't want to learn things. You're stupid. I'm smart. You're dumb. They always do this. That is their entire purpose. Every, almost every sentence, 
that an evolutionist says that is directed towards a creationist has that somewhere buried, sometimes pretty deep, usually not very deep, in the sentence. Okay, here's his next video. Almost any religious person who has not converted recently, you will find that most of them were introduced to religion at a very young age. He just said, let me translate that for you, if you ask any person who wasn't converted after a young age, when religion was introduced to them, they will say, at a young age. That's like saying, well, if you ask people what their favorite color is, most of the people who don't say things other than red are going to say red. At that age, everything is fun. I would like to challenge that notion. I'd imagine being eaten alive would not be fun at that age. Games, running, no, even getting yelled at has some modicum of excitement. No. No, no it does not. Believe me. Religion is most effective on those who have no knowledge of anything to the contrary. Okay, that applies to absolutely anything you're trying to get someone to believe. That applies to evolution. That applies to saying the sky is blue. Church, temple, whatever. is introduced to people. Fighting is new. Fun. Oh, not for me it wasn't. Okay, listen to me. When I was a child, oh, how I hated school. The Sunday school they had, that, that's not too bad. To this day, I do enjoy youth, but the service, when I was younger, I, I, I enjoy it somewhat now, but when I was younger, I was sitting in there. I was not allowed to move significantly, and, you know, I was, I was a young child. We like to move significantly when we're that young, you know, humans, most of us. I was not allowed to speak. And I enjoyed speaking. And I was sitting there, and the pastor was yelling at me, and I didn't know what I had done wrong. That's all I perceived. I perceived I'm not allowed to move or speak or do anything, and there was an old guy yelling at me. I did not see that as fun. Interfighting Bible studies with frequent games and quizzes that are rewarded with candy. Okay, you cannot criticize the use of candy to condition the intellect of a young person. But regarding that, it is true that they often give out candy in exchange for getting questions right, but not to the four, five, and six-year-olds. They start giving out candy when you're like nine or ten. Because by then, it's funny because candy is something that's usually given to people who are much younger. And the games, well, maybe, but it's not like you're playing Portal, you know? They're usually very rudimentary, not very good, or very basic. As the child grows older, they become more accustomed to these things and wish them to be the norm. Okay, first of all, they are the norm. In... The world. Some 97% of people are religious. And because the vast majority of religious people go to church or temple or mosque or mass or whatever, this actually is the norm for the majority of people. Only 2 to 3% of the world is atheistic. Now, they work very hard to have as much influence as possible to the point where that number is rapidly growing through the indoctrination at the public schools. I say schools because they're, they're really not adequately described as schools because a school is a place of education. And education presents all sides in an equal light and allows the child to, for themselves, decide what to believe. Or Unfortunately, as one gets older, reality sets in. Damping one's youthful spirits. Okay. 
Again, translation. He just said, as one gets older, they realize that religion cannot be true because they become intelligent and mature. And if they don't realize religion cannot be true, they don't. They haven't become intel, intelligent and mature. You know, he's very good at burying, burying passive aggressive jabs in his videos. This is a natural way of life. I love how he has human-made arrows on the screen when he says that. The religious activities the adults are using are last-ditch attempts for people who are naturally disillusioned with life. They believe that through exercising their religion, they will recapture some of what they have lost. Okay, here's the thing. We haven't lost it. We continue on our religious activities not because we're trying to recapture something that we have lost. We haven't lost it. We still have it. I think he's projecting it on religious people the feeling of having lost something. Religion is happiness. Regarding you, TSN. Do you mind if I call you TSN? This system needs TSN. Tell me, TSN. Would you like to debate me? A formal debate. We can agree on some details like the location at a later date if you accept, but... The moderator will be one of my choosing, and the moderator will not be able or allowed to make any interjections or comments. The only words he's allowed to say are, sorry, sir, you've gone over your time. That's it. The subject will be your choice of the following. Potential subject number one. Has the advent of the theory of evolution eliminated the need to believe in an intelligent creator? Potential topic number two. Does the existence of suffering and death and agony in the world discredit the belief in a in an omnibenevolent and all powerful God. And if you can come up with something better, sure. Tell me. So yeah, see ya. Oh, PSN, you have until how about I'm going to give you a while. I'm going to give you until the end of March to accept my challenge, just because I want to make absolutely sure you see it. 